Hello, this is Walker Physics, 4th edition, and we're in chapter 6 on applications of Newton's laws, and we're in the end of the chapter questions on the section of circular motion. This is question number 55. When you take your 1,300 kilogram car out for a spin, you go around a corner with a radius 59 meters with a speed of 16 meters per second. The coefficient of static friction between the car and the road is 0.88. Assuming your car doesn't skid, what is the force exerted on it by static friction? Okay. Well, hmm. you've got a circle, right? So you've got Newton's law is force equals mass times acceleration. And we can modify this by saying the centripetal force, which is pulling something in towards the center of a circle, is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. That's the acceleration going into the, into the middle of the circle. It's accelerating around a curve. I don't know if you've ever noticed that if you were to go the same speed into a curve, it feels like you're getting faster. And there is an acceleration, and that, that acceleration is in towards the center of the circle. The acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is defined to be the square of the velocity divided by the radius of the circle. So that as the circle's radius gets smaller and smaller, your acceleration gets bigger and bigger. So it's the tighter the circle, the faster you seem to be going, even if you're going the same speed. Uh, on, your, on the straight road, if you go around a curve, especially a tight curve, the acceleration can be too great and it can either flip your truck, that's why there's special signs on the highway for trucks, um, or even uh, make your car go off the road. So it's going to give us some information. We've got a 59 meters here is our radius. Um, we see that the mass of the car is 1,300 kilograms and the velocity of the car is 16 meters per second. Okay, so let's first of all get our acceleration. Our acceleration is 16 squared divided by 59. So our centripetal acceleration equals 4.338 meters per second squared. That goes here, 4.338, and so I can find the force that's pulling in to the inside of the, of the circle times 1300. Okay. So this is giving you, so that's the centripetal force. Um, where is your centripetal force coming from? And there's nothing pulling on your car. There's nothing, there's no gravity field or there's no there's no rope pulling it around a curve. What you're using instead is the friction on the tires. And I guess this is a herring. It's interesting. They don't give a lot of these in this book, but this 0.88 is not necessary. You would need this if you wanted to know what is the quickest speed you could go around that curve. You'd need to know what that coefficient was so that you would know. This just says, assuming your car doesn't skid, which means that I assume that the 16 meters per second is within that speed range that keeps you on the road and doesn't throw you off the road. So um, bad, bad form, Mr. Walker, for putting that in, but uh, you don't need it. All you need is the centripetal force, and that's the force exerted by friction. So this is going to be centripetal force is 5640.67. There's 6.8, which if you, depends on how you do it, I would probably just go to, to 1. So this would be 56.41 newtons of force. Thank you.